there is all sorts of intrigue, Scott, about the number two pick and the New Jersey Devils who are waiting. I'm curious to see, first off, do the Canadians indeed take Shane Wright? That seems to be some of the consensus out there. But if not, or even if they do, will Tom Fitzgerald's phone begin to ring on the draft floor saying, hey, let's swap. We're at number four. We're at number six. We want to make our way up to number two. And here's what we're going to give you to make it worth your while. And not only that, Scott, but the idea that the New Jersey Devils have been in the hunt for so many different players on the trade market is this the moment that they get a deal done with someone to say, hey, we're in a spot where we need to take the next step forward with our franchise and we need to be competitive this year? We, we're going to take the certain player that we know that's going to produce instead of a player that might take a few years and may hit, may not be as much of an impact player. Yeah, no, I think it's a great point. And to me, New Jersey is one of those teams that you could realistically see being enticed to move out of that prestigious number two spot, right? I mean, it's, a, it's, it's all teams would love to have a pick that high. I think New Jersey, especially given the fact that they have two recent number one overall picks in Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes, they're really set down the middle. Um and they are, there has to be pressure on Tom Fitzgerald and Lindy Ruff and the rest of that team. It was a disappointing season for them last year. Signed Dougie Hamilton in the offseason. There were a ton of injuries. Goaltending, once again, did not measure up in New Jersey. Um, I think there is a lot of pressure for this team to take a, a significant step forward. I don't know if they're a playoff team or not, but, boy, they better play meaningful games come February and March next year. I think it's time for that franchise. And so, you know, if Tom Fitzgerald's phone is ringing and there's a possibility of moving down, but bringing in a, an NHL-ready player or a player right on the cusp that you don't have to wait two or three years for, I, I'm, I'm, my guess is that Tom Fitzgerald is ready and willing to listen to every single call. Um, I don't know. I don't mind the winger. I'm going to look at my notes here. Your eyes Your, left. Kofsky, thank you very much. The big Slovak. Well, and that's the interesting part for me is that, again, given their depth, their youthful depth down the middle, does Slavkovsky become another piece that you put in that puzzle you know, you have to wait maybe a year or two for him to, to really blossom into an NHL player. We saw that with Jack Hughes. But I would think that has to be a consideration, too, when uh, um, Tom Fitzgerald is thinking about what to do with that number two pick. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Slavkovsky could very well go number one. And there just seemed to be a lot of talk here in Montreal about the idea of the Devils taking a defenseman. Maybe they go and dig a little bit deeper to get the guy that they want for their blue line. That could be a key part of their future. 